Well, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to uh, education, information, inspiration, guidance, advice. And I want to talk about Aaron's silence in the face of the death of his two older sons. As you recall, Leviticus chapter 10, um, his sons, Nadav and Abihu, bring an Aish Zara, a strange fire. And I want to get into what a strange fire was. For our purposes, it was, um, they died during their performance of an unauthorized incense service. Just leave it at that for now. Now, the joy surrounding the inauguration ritual of the of the, uh, the Mishkan, the, uh, this is Aaron, the high priest, the kind of Gadol. His life was leading up to this point. This should have been the point of greatest happiness, greatest joy, greatest service of God, greatest pride. And bang, zoom, two older sons consumed by fire. Fire came down from heaven, from Hashem, and they died before Hashem, and Aaron was Silent. That's in Leviticus 10, verses 2 and 3. He was silent. His response, technically his lack of a response, attests to the greatness of Aaron, according to God, Aaron, the high priest. He, he had a resolute faith in God. He accepted the divine decree. He was silent. He didn't exhibit any external form of emotion. God's decree, he didn't question. Similarly, in many cases, we don't question God's decree because sometimes it's beyond us, it's above us. It's, um, we don't have an answer for it. Our sages, Chazal, tell us that Mises Tzedikim, the death of the righteous, can, in certain circumstances, atone for some sins. Atone for our sins. Where do they get this? The idea is derived from the fact that the Torah juxtaposes the Para Aduma, the red heifer, um, the chapter with respect to the red heifer, and the death of Miriam. And they infer from this that just as Karbanas, just as sacrifices atone, so in certain circumstances does the death of a tzaddik atones. Um, I've got a problem with this on a number of levels, but I want to mention one or two. The reason is this. If the Torah wanted to infer that the death of a righteous person atones in certain circumstances, why didn't they mention the death of Miriam chapters and chapters before when they were talking about sacrifices atoning for sin? The Paraduma didn't atone for sin. It was to um, it was a vehicle for tahara, for 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 uh, um, ritual cleanliness. The paraduma, the red heifer, the entire process to reduce it to ashes and its use, it's the quintessential example, it's the paradigm of a chok. Chok, a chukim, the, the, these laws, chukim, mishpatim, edot, chukim are laws which do not seem to make any logical sense you can't they're not obvious like don't kill don't uh, i mean sorry don't don't murder don't uh, don't steal they're obvious all culture cultures have them hook him like the paradoma they don't seem to make any sense it's the rationale their meaning is beyond our understanding we accept it because Basically, God said, do this, and God says, do it. 
wear tzitzis, okay, fine, we wear tzitzis. Don't mix uh, uh, linen and uh, and uh, with other uh, fabrics. Don't do it. You don't do it. Why? God said. Don't ask, you're not going to get an answer, basically. We accept the reality because that's part of being devoted to God. He's God. He gets to call the shots. We accept God's decree unequivocally. Um, I think the same applies with the death of a righteous person, with the uh, Mises Atadik. We hope nobody dies. Nobody wants somebody to die. We pray that the tragedy not befall anyone. But when it occurs to a Tzadik, especially in uh, tragic circumstances, when, when a, a righteous person is martyred, um, when um, uh, a Tzadik dies of, uh, at a young age, and the, uh, the one who leaps immediately to mind is Rabbi Arya Kaplan, died at a very young age, and Rabbi Nachman of Breslov died at an early age and after a horrible life of suffering and tuberculosis. Your heart tears apart. Like these, the, these people haven't gone through enough. They weren't devoted enough. They weren't righteous enough. They didn't suffer enough. The, this, is, this is what you do. We have no answer. Why do tragedies like this befall special people, such a young soul, a saint who suffered so much? The only response is that it's a divine decree and we don't question the Almighty. There are people I know who have suffered indescribable things during the Holocaust. We have no answers. Maybe because, like the generation after the destruction of Jerusalem, we're, we're too close to the event. We have no answers. And we don't question the Almighty. Well, you can question him, you're probably not going to get an answer. The paradoma, the, uh, the laws regarding the red heifer, is an anomaly. It defies human rationale. So too, how the death of a righteous person can atone for, in certain circumstances, to a person's sin, these are, they raise questions for which there's no logical human response. It's a test of our faith and trust in the Almighty. It's a trust, it's a test of our amuna, our faith in God, and our bitachon, our trust in the Almighty. And that is the essence of Judaism. Um, Aaron Akainagadl, the, the high priest, the tzaddik, he set the standard for our response to tragedy. It was a day that was supposed to have been the heights of joy. During uh, rituals that he, as the high priest, were intimately involved. We have learned from him not to permit personal tragedy to override joy and sanctity. We're not supposed to mourn. Uh, we're not supposed to be sad on the Sabbath, on Shabbos, or on Yantif, uh, or on a, a holy day, a festival. These are Hashem's. These are God's days of joy. Easy to say, hard to do. One of the hardest mitzvahs, one of the hardest things to do is always to be happy. Think about it. Always, always be happy, no matter what, always. That's why in a month or so, uh, we have the festival of Sukkot, Zman Sim the joys, uh, the, the, uh, the time of our happiness. To be happy for, for a week, always happy and nothing else, that's tough. That's a tough one. But it's our duty. Uh, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Imona Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.